I would like to call to order the December 19th, 2016 special meeting. Uh, former Mayor Ken Brown, would you please give us the honor of leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance? My honor. All please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. All right. Can I get roll call? Councilmember Harrington? Here. Councilmember Cook? Here. Councilmember Agramonte? Hi, here. Mayor Pro Tem Edwards? Yes. Mayor Hunley? Here. Thank you. Okay, we have one item on our, ag on our agenda tonight. Uh, just to go over the process, just for a brief second. So first, uh, after I read off the title of it, I'm going to hand it over to our city manager. And then we'll come back to council. We'll ha ask questions if we have any. And then I'll take it to public comment. Uh, anyone from the public can comment. You have three minutes. After that, it's going to come back to the council for discussion and action. At that point, the council might have questions for particular people in the uh, audience, which we might consult you, but at that point, the public comment is still closed, and then uh, the council will take an action, and then we'll get out of here. So item one is the discussion, consideration, and possible action to appoint members to the Farmer's Market Task Force or create an ad hoc committee of two council members only and give direction as to the topics the task force slash ad hoc committee should study. Ms. City Manager. Thank you, Mayor Hundley, members of the City Council. At your December 12th Council meeting, Council Member Harrington made a motion to appoint a Council subcommittee including two members of CSEC, two members of Valley of the Moon Certified Farmers Markets, City staff, and two members of the public to redefine the objectives of the Farmers Market and report back to Council for ratification before consideration of extension of the agreement to be completed by the February City Council meeting. The motion was seconded by Mayor Pro Tem Edwards and passed three to two with Council Members Cook and Agramonte dissenting. The motion did not contain the appointment of specific Council Members and no follow-up motion was made. However, since the motion specifically called out the makeup of the committee, which included not only two Council Members but other individuals as well, it will be subject to the Brown Act and all of its requirements. In order for the process to continue expeditiously, this special Council meeting is being convened to identify next steps and consider appointments. In consultation with the City Attorney's Office, the task force slash committee could be formed under two different scenarios. Number one, it could be formed as a farmer's market task force consisting of two council members, two farmer's market board members, two members of CSCC, two members of the public, and city staff. Meetings will follow all Brown Act requirements, including 72-hour meeting notices, posting of agendas, minutes, etc. As an alternative, a second option is available. It could be formed as an ad hoc committee whereby the council could create and appoint two council members to work with staff for the purpose of meeting with the Farmers Market Board, other stakeholders, and interested parties at the committee's discretion to discuss operational and other issues. An ad hoc committee made of sole, excuse me, an ad hoc, ad hoc committee made up solely of less than a quorum of the council would not be subject to the strict Brown Act requirements due to its specific and short-term nature of subject matter and would not require 72-hour meeting notices, posting of agendas, minutes, etc. Under this scenario, the ad hoc committee could meet as frequently as needed and not be constrained by timelines for meeting noticing. Council could suggest but not mandate who the ad hoc committee should consult with. Topics of the discussion for the task force or ad hoc committee based on council comments from the December 12th council meeting could include the composition of vendor types, vendor selection, and or local preference, modification to existing operations, a review of the fee structure, and a recommendation on extension of the existing agreement. 
That concludes staff's presentation tonight. Um, I'm open for, as is the city attorney, uh, attorney's office. Veronica Neb is our city attorney tonight. We're open for questions um, and then we uh, are asking for direction at this time. Thank you. Are there any questions? Um, I don't have a question. I have a comment. Okay. Um, at this point we're going to do questions and we'll come back to the council for comments. Okay. Well then my question before my comment in another section would um, be it seems as if, and I can't assume this, but it seems as if the ad hoc committee, because of the deadline, seems to be possibly a quicker way of working with this because there's, you can do meetings as many as you want without having to notice them. And that was just a question. Do you feel that that's why that's in there? or That is, that is really one of the um, options uh, that is being offered tonight because it is a more expeditious it is a more expeditious route, and we are looking um, get, uh, looking at a potential for uh, timelines here that, that might be a, a bit more helpful to the subject matter. Okay. Are there any other council member uh, questions? Council member Harrington. Um, so the two people that are on the ad hoc committee, those people are brown acting together, and they can't talk to anyone else about it. Is that correct? That is correct. Anyone else meaning, sorry, anyone else meaning any member of the council, that would be correct. But certainly third parties, you could speak to a member of this, the, the commission, you could speak to a member, representative of the farmer's market, you could speak to. It would just be the, the remainder of the council members would need to wait until there was a meeting and a report from the ad hoc committee. Right. right. Any others? Okay. I'd like to open this to public comments. Yeah, three minutes. Good evening, Council. Larry Barnett, 5th Street East. I circulated a memo, which I assume you got. I sent it to the, to the city clerk. I'm unclear about, uh, actually, the procedural matter that's been outlined here and the legal basis for it. And I'm not going to take all my time um, on this particular issue. My concern is this. The council passed a motion three to two to take a specific action. That action dictated the agenda for tonight. In order for you to move ahead with an alternative to that action, you're going to have to rescind the motion that you passed because you essentially directed the creation of a multi-member, including public and farmers market representatives, action on the part of the council. You did not pass a motion saying that you wanted to ex also include the opportunity to explore a two-member council-only um, um, subcommittee. So. I'm interested in hearing the city representative of the city attorney's office address this, this issue, but my understanding of the way the proper procedure is, you would need to have a member of the majority who approved the motion that passed, bring up the reconsideration of that motion, and vote to rescind it, and then vote on the creation of a two-member committee if that's what you decide to do. I don't really understand how all of a sudden there's a section option the second option thrown into the agenda about which the council has not made a decision. So that's issue number one. Issue number two is that I still support the idea of uh, essentially extending the contract for another year. It's not on your agenda tonight to do that, but I still feel that that is going to take the time pressure off. All of a sudden what's happening is the two-person subcommittee is being advocated because all of a sudden you're running out of time. Well, you were running out of time the last time you had a meeting. And if time is actually of the essence, and that's what you're concerned about, the best way to proceed is, as I said at the last meeting, take the pressure off yourself, take the pressure off the market. There's not a disaster going on. Nobody's been injured. Nobody's been hurt. And, and go ahead and let the market continue. And then in the more relaxed atmosphere of the, of the upcoming season, explore any changes you want to make to the framework for the market. Finally, I want to say that I think it will be a mistake for this council to get into the weeds of fees for specific vendors at the market. I heard Mayor Har Member Harrington talk about the prepared food vendors. I think it's a very difficult thing to get into. You're not going to ask them for their cost, for their expenses, the cost of their ingredients. It's like trying to find out how much it costs the, somebody at the patch to grow a tomato. 
I think you're going too far into it. That's what you hire market management for. Figure out what you want to charge the market. Let them figure out how much they need to charge in order to make a, a, the event pay for itself. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello, Chris Welch, 463 Claudia Drive. <clears throat> I'm here uh, in my capacity as the market manager. And um, notwithstanding what uh, Mr. Barnett said, which is all very sensible, um, we just wanted to make three points, really. One is uh, we're ready, willing, and able to work with the city about anything. Two is there is this critical time frame. I distributed a little, uh, I think it's a testament to um, our organization's efficient management that perhaps you guys aren't aware of what goes into making the market open on the first Tuesday in May. But there is a, there is a pretty good timeline. We're already outside of the normal timeline, which, you know, we can work with some delay and we're willing to do that. But if it gets pushed too far, for instance, the discussion of February, um, we're in real trouble in terms of getting what we need to get done in order to have the market open on the first Tuesday in May. So uh, that's, that's critical to us is this time frame. And the third uh, thing that we wanted to say is that if you pick, um, well, either really either of these options, if you're appointing people to this subcommittee or the ad hoc committee, we would request uh, that you pick people who are fairly even and open towards the market. And for instance, uh, Mr. Edwards has made it clear in other meetings that he doesn't go to the market, he doesn't really like it. We don't really think he would be such a good choice for uh, one of those uh, council members to be on that committee. No offense to you, Gary, but um, th those are our really three requests, and that's, that's all I have to say, so thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, George Thompson, Nicole Lane, Sonoma. Uh, I just wanted to make myself available as a citizen uh, with, uh, I, I farmed for four years in Sonoma and used to sell at the farmer's market. And I was on the market board under Hilda Schwartz for four years back in the 90s. And I'd be happy to serve on any kind of ad hoc or uh, volunteer committee if you are looking for a citizen. I have a little bit of experience with the market. I would bring in a pro-musician uh, bias to my presence, however, so you might want to keep that in mind. Thank you. Is there any further public comment? <clears throat> Madam Mayor, City Council, and staff. I have to dovetail on what Mr. Barnett said. We have been running a market for six years, and we've had very little, if any, type of situation happen that was catastrophic or bad in any way that it would hurt the city of Sonoma in any way, shape, or form. So going back on that, please grant us that one-year extension. Work with us. We want to work with you. And then this way, at the end of the season, or getting towards the end of the season, we would be able to restructure, or if you're going to be doing something different, then it would be a cohesive joint effort between city and farmer's market. And that's all that I can say right now. And I thank you for you, the, the opportunity of standing before you tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Any other further public comment? Seeing none, uh, City Attorney, could you answer the question regarding the discussion of uh, the motion last time regarding a subcommittee and the specifics that we're talking about today? Certainly. Oops, sorry. Absolutely. So um, the council, so first of all, let's um, talk about the question of whether or not the agenda for this evening could contain an option or any options on this item that weren't previously before you. The answer to that is, of course, yes. The council is, does not set, per se, the agenda by its pr what's on its previous meeting. It doesn't require a meeting to set the agenda or set the items that will be on the agenda for a subsequent meeting. Your past practice and, and current practice has always been for the, 
all intents and purposes unless the matter is pursuant to your council policy manual specifically added by a single council member by request the agenda is controlled by the city manager and that has been your practice for as long as I can remember and I probably for as long as any of the staff can remember as well um, so in looking at this item um, considering the action that you had uh, previously taken at the at your last meeting on this item and looking at the time constraints staff felt that it was apparent and incumbent upon staff to add to the agenda the option that would allow you to complete this issue and any review that the council wished to undertake in the time period that was allotted without adversely affecting the market moving forward so that is why that option is on the agenda in front of you this evening the action that you took at your previous meeting did not include appointing any members to this particular committee. So as it stands right now, while the committee was constituted by your previous action, it is not staffed nor have members been appointed. If you do not appoint an, an, <coughs> excuse me, any members to that committee, the committee will not have any action to take and will, by its own lack of members appointing appointed to it cease to exist um, the council can if it wants to at a subsequent meeting repeal that action if that's what you would like to do um, though it's probably unnecessary and in particular if you establish the ad hoc committee um, as staff gave you the option to do this evening um, you could do one of two things either never uh, constitute the previous committee established at your previous meeting or you could constitute that committee and have one meeting of it asking it after the ad hoc committee does its work well what do you think and you have that option available to you as well so I will leave it at that and I can answer any questions that the council may have with regard to that issue thank you and since we essentially have at least three decisions to make one is the structure of the committee the second is the members of the committee and the third is the portion about uh, comments about the market should those each be done in three separate motions or should we wait till the end and have a motion that has all of them so right now what you have in front of you is the option relative to this particular item is um, to appoint the task force or the subcommittee. Um, topics of discussion from the December, December 12th meeting, you discussed those but did not choose them at the December 12th meeting as I understand it. Is that correct? Yes. The members of the committee? Right. That's correct. Well, you didn't discuss, you didn't select the members of the committee, but you also didn't discuss at that time or didn't select the topics that would be discussed by the committee at that time. Correct. Okay. So yes, I think as separate items, um, Although certainly um, the first order of business would be do you keep going with the task force idea or do you um, go to the ad hoc committee and then with each one the second item would be who do you appoint to those committees and then the third would be that discussion about what are you going to do and in what time frame. Okay, so you recommend after we have our first discussion about uh, task force versus an ad hoc that we stop, do a motion there and then come back and then go to the next step? I think that's probably the cleanest way to address it, yes. Okay. So uh, coming back to council comments, so we'll tackle the first issue first, which is the idea of uh, keeping it as a task force as discussed last time or uh, switching to an ad hoc committee as in our packet. So uh, who would like to start us off? Could I? Council Member Agamotti. So for the reasons I mentioned or ask the question I ask of our city manager, because of the, um, the um, deadline of February, I thought that this would, the ad hoc committee made more sense because you don't have to notice the meetings. You can just have those meetings. And um, I just felt it felt more practical. Council Mayor Ed I agree Vice with that Mayor as, Edwards. I, I, I agree with that as well. Um, I think the uh, ad hoc makes a lot of sense. And um, in, in spite of popular belief, there's no intention to not have a Tuesday market. Um, I hope that the emphasis becomes a farmer's market, um, but um, I think moving it as along as quickly as possible, keeping in mind that the farmers are going to grow things that are going to need to be sold at the market, and I think the sooner that we can get the information out there, um, the better off we are. All right. Further comment or a motion on this first item? Um, well, I, I'd like to, I'm sorry. Council Member Harrington? 
I was just going to make a motion um, that uh, we create an ad hoc committee of two council members only and give direction wh who are taking direction from the topics that the ta that the ad hoc committee should study. Okay, and I'll second that. Okay, second. Uh, there's no further comment. Can I get a roll call vote? Member Harrington? Aye. Councilmember Cook? No. Councilmember Agramonte? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Edwards? Yes. Mayor Hundley? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. So moving on to the second task at hand would be to pick the two members that are would like to be a part of this. So if anybody would like to personally volunteer, otherwise we might have to force somebody. All right, Councilmember Harrington? I'd like to volunteer. All right, Councilmember Cook? And I'd also like to volunteer. Um, at the last meeting, I did state that I would I would like to see the extension for a year, so we would be able to bring back the ad hoc. Um, I understand the desire of the council, and uh, even though I voted no on the previous, um, I would like to be one picked to, to help in the discussion. Okay. Anybody else? And I'd like to volunteer as well, since um, Councilmember Cook uh, voted against the ad hoc committee. Um, I'm going to put my place my. Uh, Thank you. Does the city attorney have any advice on what to do when we have more members than we have spots on the ad hoc committee? Well, um, at this point, it's the the mayor's. It's a mayor appoint, mayoral appointment ratified by the council. So certainly, I think you can um, make a choice and go along the lines as to how you get votes. Um, if you get votes on your first choice, then that will be the end of it. If you don't get the requisite number of votes. Vo votes on your next choice. We go on and on until you get the requisite number of votes ratifying that appointment. Okay, so I make the appointments. Does someone else have to make the motion to uh, prove it, or is it? It's mayoral appointment with. So it's mayoral appointment, and then you call for ratification by the council. All right. So um, I agree with Councilmember Edwards' uh, rationale about um, being in support of having the committee in the first place, and it would make sense to have people that supported having the committee, so I would like to appoint Councilmember Edwards and Councilmember Harrington. Um, and now do I call for a vote for ratification? Ms. City Clerk. Councilmember Harrington? Aye. Councilmember Cook? No. Councilmember Agramonte? No. Mayor Pro Tem Edwards? Yes. Councilmember Mayor Hunley? Yes. All right, to the third piece, um, now we have an opportunity to talk about uh, items we would like our ad hoc committee to discuss. So who would like to start that off? Oh, I'm sorry. We Didn't seem to have the same <laughs> rhythm. <laughs> um, Councilmember Agamonte. What I've heard, I think, and maybe I'm off track, but I think I've heard moving music to the amphitheater. Is that what we're talking about, these things? That could be. And the issues of vendors possibly only being from the valley? That or a preference. The food trucks or vendors. And also the, veg the sale of vegetables, a farmer's market per se, possibly in another place to be away from music. But I don't know. I'm not clear on that, actually. But those are just some of the three things that have come to my attention. Okay, thank you. Councilmember Vice Mayor Edwards. Yeah, so um, for me, uh, it's, it's something that I think there's a, a move in the community that's not always, you know, people don't always come to these meetings. And the conversations that I've been having with lots of the public is about where people, it's gotten so busy at the market. And back when, we, when I was on the Planning Commission, we spent a lot of times talking about the amount of parking that we need. Um, for a business to open or uh, a restaurant or it doesn't matter what the business is it could be a sock shop um, and we make parking requirements and space requirements and so on I just I want to take a look at how many you know if we have 68 mr. Darden you can probably tell me how many vendors we have now 67. so 67 vendors and when I think about the number of cars that it takes to have 67 vendors and the staffing and so on I mean, those are just concerns that I have, so I want to look at the whole package. I have zero interest in telling the market how to charge, what to charge for fees. Because all I know is that I want to recover the costs that we have in our city when it comes to, to staff, law enforcement, um, public works, et cetera, et cetera, the wear and tear on the plaza. Um, those are the things that I'm interested in, and I would like to see where the market becomes uh, a little more familiar with what it was when it was founded. 
and I'd love to see Grinstead Theater being used. I think the Destination Races, um, they're moving into the Grinstead Theater. I, I think it would be fantastic. I think the Jazz Society used to be in our, on a regular basis. Um, and that's what I want to see it uh, come back to be as far as, you know, the possibility of where we have lots of food vendors. Maybe that's something that could happen once a month and make that the, the you know, to me it's just become kind of a, a weekly city party and I'd like to see it. I want to see the, the uh, farming community actually benefit from this. Um, I want to see the public benefit, all the people, Rotary Club, Kiwanis, other people that get together uh, on the plaza and part of it is to bring people together and that's what I want to continue to see. The market's done a great job of getting people together but sometimes when we have 2,000 people on the plaza, it's a little uncomfortable for a lot of our public that's lived here for many years. Um, so I just want to take a look at the whole aspect of it. Um, and I have, you know, I want to see the market continue. I understand that you need to notify your vendors. Um, but the question is, is that when I, when I come to City Hall during the week, as I've stated before, uh, you know, the markings are, are there all week long and the, uh, and the barricades are there. And um, it's kind of like it's a permanent thing for 26 weeks. And I kind of want to get back to getting the plaza back for um, uh, for at least part of the uh, part of the month. So um, I, I feel like I can be open-minded, and um, and there's probably things I don't know about the market. Um, and uh, Mr. Welch, the reason why I don't go to the market is it's you know big crowds are not uh, uh, you know not that attractive to me. Um, and it used to be where I used to go to the Friday and the Tuesday market every week. Um, religiously and it's just gotten to the point where and a lot of the public they're just people just don't come out and say it but they will and um, uh, hopefully I can represent some of those folks and also be open-minded to your concerns so thank you councilman Her Harrington um, so um, just by way of background on the CSCC we considered the fee for the farmers market in depth and met with them many times to talk about the operations there and there is no, um, it's not the role of the city council to tell the farmer's market how much to charge individual stalls, but the city does subsidize the farmer's market. So to the extent that the vendors there could afford to pay more so that they could pay more of their own way instead of receiving a city subsidy, that is a question for us to determine. And I think we should, we have to look at whether or not the vendors that are there, and I'm excluding the farmers because the purpose of the farmer's market is to create that venue for them, but the non-farmers that are there, can they do more to pay for the cost of the farmer's market? And I think that's a um, fiscally prudent, you know, uh, question that we need to look into and can be answered. And, you know, for example, um, off the grid does uh, food truck events, which I know they're not all food trucks, but prepared food, and they charge a de minimis fee, $50 for being there, but then they charge 10% of the profits. And so through that, um, they're able to um, bring in more revenue. So I want to make sure that we do things so that we can continue to support the farmers and also to create a fun event, but that, um, but that the city is not subsidizing businesses that can really pay their own way. I don't think that's an appropriate use of our funds, and that's something we can look into. And um, and I'm happy to work with the farmers market, the current farmers market management, to do that. And they've been really responsive and helpful in my experience with them. And I'm confident that we can um, figure this out together. So, Councilmember Cook. Well, I'd like to say that I think that the farmers market is doing a great job. I want to thank uh, the management team on that. Um, I would like to see the ad hoc uh, looked at next year. So, one thing that I would. Uh, like to see us so we don't have this 11th hour um, and having council members um, available for that. I would like to see an extension into next year um, earlier, possibly around September, so we can, um, you know, go ahead and, and do this in a timely fashion. So I'd just like continuation. And I agree on the, the timeline of this. I, I think that this conversation could have happened uh, earlier and gotten more productive, but I, I think that at this point, uh, going to the next season, I think everyone's excited about it, and it's going to happen, and it's, uh, it's going to continue to be a community treasure, but there could be a few small tweaks now. Um, 
especially leading up to the discussion of what the fees are going to be, which is what started this whole conversation. And while I, I agree that the city micromanaging aspects such as the exact fees charged to the vendors is a level that we don't want to get into. However, it is relevant to us when, you know, when we are told that, you know, certain things can't happen because of budgetary restrictions and based on the budget that we got last year, um, you know, the way that it was apportioned, I, I think that there could be better <coughs> practices involved of leveraging the revenue raised by prepared food vendors to then use it to support farmers, which at the end of the day, I think everyone agrees that's why the number one reason for the event, the second event of which is, you know, creating a place for the community to come together. But I, I think, I, I really think that this can have a positive result for all parties involved. Um, I'm, I'm thankful for the Farmers Market Board for all of the hard work that you guys put into. I always see Christopher Welch running around every Tuesday trying to wrangle all the vendors. I know during the week, uh, Bill Darden, your team is trying to get it all together and you've, you've created a, a magnificent event. It's, it's, it's unrivaled by you know, any city near us. But my interest is in sustainability and I want it to be on a path where we can keep it for a very long time instead of it getting to a, this tipping point where it's too huge and suddenly you know, the, the fate of the event is at risk. So um, you know, I, I think that just reconsidering uh, the way that the fees are just as in terms of leveraging uh, money to spend on the things we want to, like farmers, um, and then also I think that in choosing uh, vendors, I know that in the original RFP there was a statement made about local businesses, but I think that you know, first considering the businesses that are born in the city and what they look like and how that we can use this opportunity to help grow them. Um, and then also another one is, uh, this is very specific, but with the, uh, the bike parking, which I've always appreciated, uh, there was a suggestion once that the bike parking should be moved to the edge so that when people ride in their bikes they can actually get off their bike and park it. But I, I, I think that at this point, that there's just going to be some tweaks that you guys are going to work out together, and I'm confident it's going to work out. Councilmember Edwards? Just one thing to add in when we talk about the revenue to the city is when our restaurants um, lose revenue, um, we lose those tax dollars. That 8.5% disappears for us. And that's something that I would like to work with the staff to figure out, you know, what that actually means to us, if it's, you know, how much money that that Tuesday drop in business um, means. So, thank you. Thank you. Any further comments? Well, I, I, can I ask do a question? have uh, another comment. Not on the uh, issues, but general comment. Uh, is it time for that? Uh, if, if it's about this specific item. Okay, then it's not. I still would like to have a comment. I think tonight we are only allowed to talk about this one specific item. There's no well, I'm general comment. about the deadline, and that, that's part of this. Okay. You discuss, discussed it yourself. Sure. Yeah, then I think that would be warranted now. Okay. Well, so initially, um, I mean, I, uh, I really believe that what we're doing this evening makes sense because I think any contract, any agreement needs to be revisited. And so I think uh, I go along with that. My only concern, and, and because of the, um, the February date that was... Um, sort of um, expressed, I did not agree with that. I felt that it was punitive and, um, and unfair because, uh, as I said, uh, the, you know, the Tuesday market really is another kind of animal. It has nothing to do with other events. And I know that this a business and you have to keep it going. And as you've seen here in this preseason timeline, there's a lot going on. And so I thought that the February date uh, was unfair. And that's why I was one of the dissenting votes, not because I don't agree that this is a, a good thing to revisit. Councilmember Harrington? Just a question. So when we have the ad hoc committee, um, if we want to have a meeting with folks from the farmer's market and members of the community to discuss it, we can have those meetings, correct? And we just organ we get a room and we organize that meeting and people can come and we can have the discussion. It's just that we don't have the formal notice period. That, that's yes. correct. Okay. Yes. Thank you. At this point, do we have to take action or is this more of a sort of listing our ideas? I think you're you're just listing your ideas and requests to the subcommittee. If the subcommittee wants to go into other ideas, I mean, the, the whole purpose of an ad hoc committee is it isn't 
directed specifically by the council, but by all of you listing your comments and things that you had concerns that you'd like the committee to take up. The committee can take up all of those, some of those, um, as many of those as it feels, but it knows what the council and each of you are interested in after that. And I think Carol kept a list of those items to be able to give those to the committee. Okay. Does our ad hoc committee feel they have been advised? Yes, All right. Is this where I get to adjourn the meeting? Yes. All right. We are now adjourned. Thank you so much. Okay. The writing is provided by Sonoma Paint Center, located at 815 West Napa Street. For more information, you can go to sonomapaintcenter.com.